What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and a couple of you have been asking me about this Opto Groove Epic PLC that I have sitting in the back here and essentially what happened was once I started loading Ignition Edge onto the Raspberry Pi as you can see on, on the videos that are going to be linked on your screen right now, I decided to look into a solution that's going to be a little bit more robust on the industrial side and essentially provide us with more than just that um, industrial edge application not that there's anything wrong with the raspberry pi but i believe that we need something a little bit more uh, robust to go into a panel on the industrial side so i decided to reach out to opto 22 that produces a pic that actually has the capability to have ignition on it as well as many other protocols that we're going to talk about essentially node red it has ignition like i said it works with mqdt that means it can send data up to a server and we also have the capability of some of the features on the controller side that they've designed themselves through groove epic and we're going to be looking at the hardware today and then in the subsequent videos we're going to be talking a little bit more about the capabilities on the software side and we're going to jump into some tutorials that being said i wanted to bring in the controller a little bit closer so we can look at the hardware features of this controller and essentially this demo kit so the first thing that you're going to notice right away is of course the screen that was on just a second ago so the controller features a touch screen that is able to configure the controller you're also able to see data and you're able to program an application that's going to run similar to how you would see it on your phone essentially and display all the information that you can have uh, through your nodes and you can add images you can add whatever you want essentially it's a full application that's going to be running on your uh, on your machine that being said the controller still has the features that we're used to with rockwell or any other controller so you have these io cards that we're seeing on the right side of the main uh, cpu unit and some of these are inputs some of them are outputs so this is an input output and then we have an input for the rtd there's going to be a little rtd that's currently tangled up on the right side of the controller so this is a temperature sensor right here and last but not least we have an input of 0 to 10 volts so every feature that you can think of in a normal plc you're probably going to get with the opto groove epic that being said it has a lot more features like i mentioned the software capabilities are a lot more but i do want to to stress as well that we're going to get into some of the design features and they're going to be a little bit different if you're coming from a Rockwell or maybe Siemens background but we're going to get into that a little bit later. That being said if we look at the hardware it's very similar like I was saying there's going to be points of IO something that we're used to in other controllers and you're going to wire them in point by point just like you would expect. You can configure the, the, the hardware essentially your setup on the website and you can buy multiple cards so depending on the chassis size that you purchase you can add more or less input cards this specific chassis is a four slot chassis but like i said you can definitely change that out and there's going to be a couple of features that i really like on the hardware side that they've done really right so the first one being the modularity of the platform so you know the fact that you can disconnect this uh the screen unit and essentially access the main cpu you can just remove the two screws that you have on the bottom and on the top and remove this unit we might do this in a next video if you guys are interested in that you can also remove each one of these cards just like you would expect in, in any other unit you can also readjust like for example there's this little features feature that i like i don't know if you can see it but this uh this holder is now protruding a little bit higher than the other ones and this is essentially if you're starting to get a lot of cables underneath the points then you can either clamp them down or give them a little bit more breathing room so that it makes it a little bit more easier in the field to set up in terms of the wiring one thing that i do like myself are the screw terminals here they are not screws they are actually spring clamp terminals so what that means is that you need to insert a screwdriver in order to be able to take out the cable and put it back in i really hope that they offer that feature in the future but that's not, a, not not really a big deal it's a matter of preference i know some of the electricians prefer one method and some prefer the other next thing that we're going to look at is the opened uh cpu so like i've mentioned before you can certainly remove this hmi and essentially the programming unit and next you have the power supply on the right side but we do have multiple ports accessible i don't know how well you can see it on your screen right now but we do have two dedicated ethernet port 
ports this module also supports wi-fi and you do have some dedicated hmi ports as well so what's really cool is that you can plug in an hmi cable and you can use this directly uh, effectively as a display screen on your plant level you don't need anything else that being said what i've been doing myself is you can connect to this wirelessly like i was saying on your phone and you can see the full application that you would be running on the screen directly on your phone through ethernet and you can do the same through your computer so to be honest with you i'm uh, I guess you can set up a screen through an HMI port, port and you can display some data, but I think you can access plant-wise uh, operations a little bit better through Ethernet. So that gives you a little bit flexibility. Uh, that being said, we will be connecting through Ethernet in order to be able to see the application on the screen. But we will get this started. Let's get some power on and see how this thing boots up. All right, so we're going to sign into our system. I'm just going to press sign in and we should be able to access Groove Manage from which we can see the different settings of the controller. Like I said, we can access the full software through Ethernet and we're going to get into that shortly. But the first thing that we want to look at is the I.O. As you can see here, I'm able to recognize and see the four cards that I'm currently using in my chassis. There's going to be the input that's going to be 24 volt standard. There's going to be an output card DC uh, digital. There's going to be an input on the thermocouple. And last but not least, a 10 volt plus or minus. So I'm going to click on any of the cards. And what we're going to see is essentially the status. So you see this card blinking right now. And that's the card that's linked to the RTD. If I can hold down this temperature sensor, we'll notice a change in temperature, just like we would expect. So as you can see, the temperature in degrees Celsius is going up. And we can press on this little arrow to see a little bit more on the setup of that channel zero for that specific card. So as you can see, you can do quite a bit with the modules and this specific PLC. You can notice that there's going to be different voltages level uh, levels. Since we have nothing essentially tied into this, you're not going to see it except on channel zero. So there's this little knob that I'm turning on the right side. And as you can see, it's changing the value up here. And that's tied into channel zero, as you can see with this uh, yellow wire. I'm going to close that down. I'm going to exit this back. And as you would expect on the start button, so I have a label there. If we press this, you'll notice that there's going to be an on. The LED is going to come on as well on the button. And if I depress that, it goes back to off. There's also an indicator on the card, just like you would expect in any other PLC system. And what's really neat, if you open this up, you'll notice that there's going to be, I don't know how easy it is to see, but essentially there's like a LCD ribbon cable that's sitting in the back that you can probably access. There's not enough lighting to see it, but essentially that's how they get the LEDs to actuate over here on this side of the card. I'm going to move this back a little bit to get it back in focus. And let's look at some of the other features out of the box. So I haven't necessarily played with all of them, but we can access Groove View. So Groove View is going to be the HMI system of a Groove Epic. So that's something that I believe they developed themselves. I don't believe that that's loaded any views as of right now. I actually created some views, but I had to reset the controller in order to flash the firmware. I didn't create a backup like I should have, but we are going to go back into Groove Manage into the main screen and we're going to look at this in a subsequent video. Next, we also have Node Red. So Node Red is not something that I'm very familiar with at this point, but it's a software that essentially allows you to create different flow diagrams and how to communicate with different tags. It, it has a lot of capability. From what I've seen, you can do some really cool things. And what I'm actually uh, interested in is creating an Alexa based application that would control my house instead of using the outlets that I've using that I've been using all over the place and controlling this with Alexa is going to be really really cool. We also have ignition like I've mentioned at the beginning of the video. We have MQTT which is a very very popular protocol nowadays for sending your data to an MQTT broker. We're going to look at that as well. Ignition has that capability so I'm not sure what the direct difference between those two is but we should be able to communicate through MQTT directly without the need of essentially the ignition license. That's what I'm assuming. There's also going to be this controller 
section in which we can communicate and we can program this PLC as a PAC controller. We're going to look at that as well. Or Code Assist. So Code Assist, for some of you that are not familiar, is a language that many programmers prefer over uh, Rockwell Automation. So it's essentially a different way to create your programs, but you can also create them in ladder logic. You can create them in sequential uh, function charts and you can create them in just C programming. So really, really cool stuff that we're going to be looking at that. And as you can see, Codasys is by default disabled. We will have to purchase a license and install it on our controller. That being said, they're not that expensive and we can still use the trial version and essentially the demo on our computer. But we can use out of the box. You'll see that the PAC controller is running out of the box. We're going to look at this in a moment let's go back to home and like i said there's going to be a couple of things that we do need to set up so there's going to be some maintenance stuff that i've already done so you can update your controller through the web interface and i've already updated my um my firmware to the latest and greatest but i did have to set up my ethernet port so if i go into system then I can definitely go into network and I can configure both ethernets as well as the Wi-Fi. So they are currently disconnected. What I was actually doing in my home network is I had one of the ethernet cables going out to the internet to make sure I can get some of the software. And the other one was going back to my laptop on the private network so I could program the device, as you can see on the static private subnet. We have an IP address of 192.168.1.100 right here with a subnet mask of slash 24. If we go back to our system, there's going to be a couple of more things. Like I mentioned, there's going to be a USB connection as well. So you can program this over USB or over Ethernet. There's going to be your licenses. I've already registered my uh, Groove Epic on the website. You'll have to do that the first time you're coming out of the box. There's going to be also some calibrations for the touchscreen, but that's not a big deal. Anyways, hopefully that gives you an overview of the system for a, from a very high level, gives you an idea of some of the capabilities. I do recommend that you check out their website. There's really cool tutorials on their end as well, but we will be diving into some of these features in the next videos. So if you guys have any specific questions, something you want to see that is going to be different than what I present, feel free to comment them down below and we're going to get started. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.